Hello and welcome to another episode of Noisebox Research. I'm Christina Broussard and thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk to you about how to produce professional sounding vocals or voiceover. Uh, a lot of people these days are producing their own podcasts at home and uh, that's great. But one thing I notice is when I'm looking around for a podcast to listen to, if I uh, cue it up, give it a listen, if the audio sounds really bad, even if I'm interested in the topic, I'll just turn it off, you know, and I don't know if you're the same, um, but that means that people are doing a lot of work and uh, doing a lot of research and editing and all this when they don't get the very foundational aspect of their podcast right, um, good enough for people to want to sit there for an hour and listen to it. Um, that can be remedied very easily with just a few pointers, uh, which I want to give you today. Um, one thing is to, of course, get a decent microphone. Um, there's a lot of USB microphones that plug right into your computer. Uh, for under 200 bucks, you can get a nice one. Um, also, uh, using a pop filter just filters out the plosives, which are the P sounds and the S sounds. Uh, it doesn't filter them out completely, but it does a good job of um, just starting to get rid of some of the vocal artifacts that you'll be dealing with inevitably uh, when you're doing vocal recording. Um, another thing to consider is input volume. You want to record your vocals at around negative 18 dB to give yourself enough headroom to work with post-production plugins and things like that. Um, so yeah, and today what I'm going to be going over is basically what types of plugins you'll want to use and how to use those plugins to get an optimum output for your vocal recordings. So I'll be talking about how to use an EQ, a vocal de-esser, a compressor, and also a noise gate. And so for this video, I'll be showing you how to use all those plugins to achieve the best possible vocal sound that you can. Thanks for joining me. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to apply some vocal effects to a pre-recorded vocal sample. So let me just go ahead and show you uh, the pre-recorded loop that I've already recorded. Um, tell you a little bit about how I recorded it. So I used a, a Rode NT1 condenser microphone, which is a great microphone. And you can see that the wave itself is already very uniform. There's no spikes in volume or anything like that, which is why I just wanted to let you know that what I'm working with here is already really well recorded audio. Now, depending on what kind of microphone you might be using and how far away from it you are, if you are dealing maybe with lots of variable amplitude in your recordings, you might have to do um, more like engineering on the audio to make it sound more uniform. For example, like if you have, if you're um, recording a podcast and you have a guest that laughs really loud or says something really loud, you might see that the audio is. Um, just for that part is louder than the rest of the audio. And that's where you would do something like apply a stronger compression so that you can rein in that loud, say laughing sound so that whenever you publish your final product and have people listen to it, they won't be like startled when they hear that loud laughing sound, you know, it'll just be more compressed and, and even sounding. So let me just go ahead and play what I've recorded for you and then I'll show you my effects rack that I use and uh, how I sweeten up this audio. So this audio is um, just with nothing applied. It's just plain as recorded. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Okay, so you can hear what this sounds like. Uh, you can hear there's a lot of S sounds in there. There's also some vocal artifacts that we'd have to manually edit out, which that's a good practice to do. Like anytime you have like some T sounds or some 
sounds like that you want to just kind of go in and edit edit them out if you have time because it's going to make the listening experience a lot more enjoyable so now that we've just played the sample as it is like with nothing on it I'm going to go through my effects chain and show you all the things that I put on my voiceover to make it sound good. So first I put a noise gate and that's just to kind of remove some of the background noise. If you're recording in a room with traffic sounds or, you know, here and there floors creaking, this and that, if you just apply a light noise gate, it can just remove some of that background noise and make it sound much better. Um, I use a compressor, a sidechain compressor, uh, for my DSing. And I'll show you how to do that. Basically what I do is I duplicate uh, my original uh, recording and then isolate the S sound frequencies and then feed that into my sidechain compressor where I can then attenuate those S sounds. I also use a just a normal glue compressor to kind of squash the audio a little bit and give it that pumping sound, that professional sound. I don't know if you listen to a lot of uh, podcasts or vocals where there's large jumps in amplitude um, that can make the listening experience really bad. So it's good just it's good practice to like just apply a, um, a general compressor on the audio just to kind of uh, make it sound better. And finally, what I like to do is put a an EQ on my final, as a final thing on my effects chain, just to kind of remove some of that lower frequency background noise and boost a few frequencies just to give the voice a little more air, a little more presence. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, show you how I first use the noise gate and noise gate is a little more advanced of a plugin. In this video, I'm going to also include a link to a blog post that explains it in detail. But for now, we can just expand this um, Ableton view where it tells you the definitions of each of these things. And so let's see, I'm going to, when I play this, I need to record record what I'm doing so you can hear it within my video. Um, so I'm going to play my example through just the noise gate for now so you can hear how the noise gate affects, um, can affect the audio. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore. Do you see how that helps? It removes some of the noise. Here, is, here it is without. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. So now I'm going to show you how I apply a de to my vocals uh, to remove some of the S sounds and plosives and vocal artifacts. And there's a lot of de plugins on the market uh, that you can buy, but I thought I would just show you how to do this in Ableton, kind of make it simple. But one de plugin that I often use on my own uh, voiceover is uh, made by Isotope. It's called the Isotope RX Elements. Yeah, that's just kind of an all-in-one automatic thing that you can throw on your audio and it, uh, it removes a lot of the mouth sounds, hums, things like that, which can be really useful and really easy to deal with if you don't have a lot of time to do this kind of stuff. So yeah, as I said, this is my... Let me just rename this so you don't get confused. Compressor. 
I'm basically all a de-esser is, is a dynamics compressor. And what I mean by that is um, it isolates a certain band of frequency and compresses it. And in this case, it will be attenuating the S sounds uh, when we lower the threshold. But first, what we have to do is we have to sidechain a duplicate of my voiceover example and so that we can isolate the frequencies of this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to delete this because I don't need it. And I'm going to add an EQ. I already have a preset, so I'm just going to add change the color okay so this is my duplicate voiceover duplicate my brain is reacting faster than my hands okay now so this is our duplicate and what I've done here my preset has already isolated where the S sounds in my own voice usually reside. But uh, if I turn this off, you can hear that this is just a normal, this is just a normal recording. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. If I turn it on, you hear those S sounds. If I move this around, it's isolating a different part of my voice. And we don't want that. We want it where, right where the S's are, because that's what we want to attenuate in our uh, dynamics compressor and our other channel. See that nasty S right there? And you want to isolate everything and cut everything out but those S sounds. Okay, now that we've done that, what we want to do is we want to turn off channel 4 uh, because we don't want these doubling up at the same time. Uh, because what that would do would be playing my original vocal line with that doubled up with those S sounds, and that's not what we want to do. We just want to simply feed this isolated S sound into our DS compressor. So I'll just choose what my voiceover duplicate. And I've already set the ratio here. You want it somewhere between 2 and 2.5 with a fast attack and um, a slower release, maybe somewhere around 30 milliseconds or so. And you'll notice whenever I start lowering the threshold that you're going to, uh, the S sound will be attenuated. Okay, so I'm going to show you what it sounds like whenever I um, start attenuating the S sounds. And so I, um, you'll see it's already playing because I'm doing my voiceover at the same time but let me just go ahead and start recording this and when I play this you can hear I lower the threshold the S sounds get get lower Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous you can see the gain reduction here and that's how much it's lowering that frequency band that we've isolated. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. You can see it's too Sally much right here. Seashells by the seashore. You don't want to give yourself a lisp. You just want to lower that S sound. Seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they that's are better. simply so gorgeous. I think that's good. We'll stick with that. Now we go ahead and add a compressor. And I've already set this, but um, 
Well, I kind of want it kind of a fast attack and uh, make it pump. We'll make maybe 0.8 milliseconds and lower the threshold. You never want it to go above five. So you just want to kind of. Sally gathers seashells. That by sounds the good, huh? Because they are simply Can so gorgeous. Do some makeup gain here. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply that so gorgeous. Good. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply and we, so finally, gorgeous. Finally, we just add a little EQ on there to give it some presence. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. And um, so yeah, I, I really like this Fab Filter Pro Q3. It costs a little bit, I think it's like 150, but totally worth it. Um, this is a Dynamics EQ, it's got multi bands on it. And basically I could just use the vocal preset setting, uh, make it simple on myself, but it, you know, just to kind of get rid of some of the background noise and then up here and the higher frequencies give it some air. Sally gathers seashells by the seashore because they are simply so gorgeous. Basically that's how you do it. And if you want to make it easier on yourself in Ableton, you can um, group these, which I've already done by selecting them all and just right click and do group or command G and you can save it as a preset and effects rack that you can just go ahead and bring in whenever you're ready. You could just go under presets and get your audio effect rack and you're good to go. Another thing I forgot to mention is if you want to sweeten up the audio uh, just a little bit more, you can take your original recording before you run it through the effects chain and uh, just bring it into the arrange view and zoom in and just delete some of these uh, T sounds and mouth sounds and then consolidate that audio and bring it into your effects chain where you'll apply all your plugin magic. And once you bounce that down, it's gonna sound as good as it can. So again, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit like. And uh, thanks so much for watching.